news. So, obviously, most of you guys know I'm a massive United fan. And obviously, most of you guys know, if you listen to the podcast, that I've been relatively realistic about my expectations going forward with the club. I feel like ever since the Glazers came on board, with the exception of the Sir Ferguson reign, it's never been successful. You know, maybe to some levels of success, you could say, you know, European leagues here and there, uh, finishing second here and there, Champions League finishes here and there, cool. But generally, in terms of kind of getting back to the heady heights of winning league titles and actually challenging for Champions Leagues and maybe even winning a couple of domestic cups like the FA Cup or League Cup, we haven't come close on a consistent basis ever since the Glazers have been in charge. And the main reason why is because the Glazers, the way they run and run the club, is very commercial heavy. They're more focused about trying to sell T-shirts, expanding our global reach, engagement, blah, 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 than actual sporting success, which for the most part is a very backwards way to think about things. Because weirdly enough, in football, if you're actually successful on the pitch, it can actually make the, you know, the plan to kind of maybe expand into new territories far easier because you have something to basically offer these fans that maybe don't know much about you you have glory you have you know cup goals you have excellent bits of play you have all these assets that you could use along the way to kind of get that glory that you could use obviously to expand your global audience but we don't do that instead we focus mostly on the commercial side of it and we abandon the football we think about the football second and then we also have the added uh, you know pain in the ass where we've given people jobs very cushy jobs who don't have any business of being the jobs that they're in you know the bankers who all got put in place when Edward was there loads of his mates from the you know, same university that they went with together the Glazers for the most part have a very hands-off approach and let them guys run it how they want to run it and just pull out the dividends and the unfortunate part of that when it comes to United is that it would be okay if we were able to stumble across another Alex Ferguson, which is odd to say, but if we were able to do so, if we were able to kind of, you know, we hired David Moyes and he happened to be the next reincarnation of Alex Ferguson. The sad thing was, it wouldn't matter. No one would care about football structure. But unfortunately for us, football is at a point now where structure is probably the most important thing in football, maybe ahead of transfers and stuff, I would say, because, you know, you're, you would, you could argue that your structure informs your transfers without adequate structure, then your transfers are going to be dog shite. Look at how well a club like Chelsea, you know, operates and runs itself, especially in the midst of everything going on with Roman Bambridge. They're able to still keep chugging along for the most part because their structure is pretty watertight. But with United, you remove people like Peter Kenyon and, you know, flipping Sykes Ferguson and maybe some other key figures and suddenly it all comes crumbling down on the football side of things. And now we're in this affair now where we hired Michael Carrick after Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was sacked, which I think too late. Ole Solskjaer was definitely sacked too late. We hired, we then put Michael Carrick in place as an interim. Then we got Ralph Ragnick in charge as another interim who also was going to, under the guise that he was going to go upstairs and consult with John Murta, who is far overqualified there and far more, you know, is far more success in that field than John Murta does to assist the likes of Darren Fletcher and John Murta. Darren Fletcher then drops down and somehow is on the bench assisting with the club. I'm not sure what that is all about and what that means anything, but for the most part, it's another illustration of just how poorly we're run. He should be nowhere near the football side of things. He should be doing the job that he's meant to be hired for. And now we have a position where we still haven't hired our next permanent coach. According to this article or this tweet, sorry, courtesy of United District, it says, Man United want their next manager to imbue the, um, to imbue the club with a strong playing entity, giving Eric Ten Hag an edge in the contest. I desire to develop a playing style figure to permanently in the plans outlined by United. But still, considering we have an international break, since the end of the season is coming up soon, we have nothing else to play for. We still don't have any pre-contract agreement in place with a manager going forward. Zero. Now, my kind of um, theory is that for the most part, I feel like, especially considering the noises coming out of the club, considering what Gary Neville has said about Pochettino recently, put out a poll on his um, Twitter feed, basically asking fans who they'd rather, Eric Ten Hag or Pochettino. The overwhelming favourite on Twitter was 80% vote was Eric Ten Hag, but then Gary Neville still said he'd want Pochettino anyway, which I can kind of give him a bly on because for the most part, he's always been a fan of him and also Pochettino did coach in the Premier League. So, Gary Neville was able to see firsthand how he was able to kind of develop his career, you know, working at, you know, Southampton, eventually go to Spurs and get them the highest finish they've had in recent years and, you know, transform how they play football and blah, blah, blah. Fair enough on that regard. But 
there's too much noise around Pochettino's name when it comes to United. The fact that he was always somebody the club wanted to hire but kind of didn't. I don't know why, you know, a few years ago. And if anything, my opinion would be we probably hired him too late now. We probably should have hired him when we maybe were letting go of, let's say, uh, a Mourinho. Maybe he should have been the person that should have come in at, at that time. So maybe three, three and a half years too late. But the noise around him is just too substantial for me to feel that there's any, any other candidate in place. I think the only person that the club really want is Poch. And it feels like to me that they're biding their time, waiting for Poch to maybe get fired from PSG, which it's looking likely, especially if they don't win the league, especially considering the, the kind of the flipping head start they have with everybody else in the league. I think there are many, many points in front of the second place team. So if they can win the league, if they don't win the league, and they also let go of Leonardo, who's meant to be having butting heads with some people in charge of PSG, and people have looked at him as being the person responsible for how poorly they're put together as a club, blah, 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 blah. blah. If that's the case, then it's going to afford Man United the ability to not pay any compensation, to not pay and you know, to not kind of get him out of his contract. And if there's one thing we know about United, they love to save money and they love to get stuff just for clicks and views. So if Pochettino's their guy and they can save money on him by waiting for him to get sacked, then this whole charade about interviewing people and, you know, whatever, presenting ideas and having a short list, this is the perfect way to go about it. Because if anything, it puts out this idea to the fans that they are actually trying to be well run because they clearly know that the people like myself and other fans don't think the club's well run and feel like we're run by a bunch of jokers. So if they're able to kind of pretend like they are well run and sort of go through the motions, then this is a way to kind of appease the fan base when they do ultimately make a decision because what will end up happening is that a bunch of top reds will end up telling people like myself, oh, relax, the club know what they're doing. Poch is in for a reason, back the manager, all this sort of nonsense. When I think in general, Poch's track record, especially in terms of bottling stuff, is quite evident and quite true. And also I think considering that he would generally require transfers and money in order for him to be successful at the club, as apart from coaching, is going to be an issue. And the fact that I don't necessarily think he's going to be able to compete with some of the better coaches in the league, um, especially nowadays. Some, you know, in the same way players fall off, I think managers can also fall off. And I think what we've seen with Poch so far is a manager on the decline for the most part now he probably does need another job in between um you know his stints you know that he's had obviously at spurs and obviously now going you know when he's at flipping you know what in between after he probably needs another job after psg to kind of restore his reputation for sure if he's able to go to seville or real madrid or what or whatever club he's meant to go to next and actually win things then for sure you can say okay Poch is back but for now hiring a poch considering how lackluster we are considering the revolution that we actually need considering all the prima donnas we have in this club i think is a bad move really really bad move interesting enough uh louis van gaal said this following um during the international week he said eric ten Hag should join a football club and not a commercial club may United is a commercial club we all knew this but it's great to see the great man louis van gaal telling it as he sees it Another quote says, Mr. Palatino was recently interviewed by Man United. According to sources close to United board, United also indicated to him that they do not intend to rush into the choice of their future coach. But clearly, he's one of their favourites, I think, still. Another one which is more concerning, apart from the managerial changes, I think, is this quote. It says, Rashford and Shaw are considered part of of the key group of core players at United want to keep at Old Trafford and are keen to push ahead with negotiations despite uncertainty of the identity of the club's next manager. I personally think clubs like Chelsea can get away with this. Even an Arsenal for the most part can get away with this. Maybe a Liverpool even. Um, a City for sure can get away with this where you don't necessarily sign players based on managers' choices, maybe preferences. Like maybe they want a left back with certain playing attributes core. Cool but you have an overall idea of how you want to play football and you just sign players based on the kind of gaps you need to fill your squad. And then you get coaches, secondly, who kind of can maybe, uh, what you call it, um, can play that kind of football, can coach that kind of football. Cool. Then it won't necessarily matter if you sign players, you know, to a contract extension with no manager in charge because essentially you're going to pick the manager and they're going to most likely use these player because you know what players you kind of want playing style-wise. But United, we don't have a playing style. We don't have a way that I think is going to be... Um, we don't have a clear, identifiable way at the moment that's definitely going to get us back to where we need to get to. 
that needs to be worked out and the only way to work that out is to allow the manager to bring in the players that they want now kind of uh, tying his hands behind his back before he even starts the job by giving him players that are not going to fit the way he's going to play or maybe are not his preference is definitely a recipe for disaster but definitely par for course when it comes to United we are probably at the most crucial maybe you'd save him yeah maybe definitely the most crucial part of United's evolution go for as a club because I've always said from the day dot that I don't think we'll ever be a club that's going to win and challenge for major honours until the Glazers leave the Glazers are the most destructive and uh, hurtful part of modern day United they're the ones single-handedly holding us back the ex-players don't help with their stupid opinions and their sort of like loyalties being basically decided on who pays them. The top players don't help with their sort of weird in a competition thing about trying to see who's the best supporter by ignoring the things that they're clearly seeing. There's clear issues. And obviously the players at the club who are toxic and entitled and have the ego that doesn't really match their kind of sporting achievement or their abilities. Cool. But the number one thing holding back the club in my opinion is the glazers and until the glazers leave we are never going to be successful but if you told me we're able to get a genius coaching who can maybe quicken the process who can maybe shorten the amount of time that we're in the sort of footballing wilderness i still think even with that genius manager in charge who i don't think exists because i think sort of think the best managers available on the like in the world football have already got jobs and will never come to united anyway so if that's the case, you're having to go with whoever's left out there at the moment. I still think it's going to be a minimum of five years before we're actually challenging for league titles, challenging to win the you know top European honours such as the Champions League and definitely winning maybe a couple of domestic cups like League Cup, FA Cup. I still think it's five years between getting it. Some would argue maybe longer because we still have to establish ourselves as a top four club, which we're not. But it takes us five years minimum. Now with the Glazers, if they hire the wrong person, every time they hire the wrong person, it basically adds two years to the process because the first year doesn't really count. And then the second year, maybe is when they get their second tra their transfers in and whatnot, they maybe change the look of the squad. But every year, every time they hire the wrong manager, especially from the outset, it adds another two years to the process. So it could be looking, you know, could be looking to, you know, eights and nines in terms of years, in terms of before we get in challenging again. So giving this new manager the platform of these players who have been for the most part part of really disastrous and unsuccessful you know united reigns uh players who for the most part have divided opinion when it comes to coaches players for the most part who other top teams wouldn't want in their starting lineup i don't think rest of the show get into any of the other top teams in the league's starting lineups where they might be sub or bench players but definitely not starting lineup players is definitely a recipe for disaster and I generally can't think of anything worse than what is being proposed at the moment. It's generally, generally shocking stuff. Um, another one, again, another thing concerning part, Bruno Fernandes has verbally agreed a terms of a new five-year contract, which again, I think is really crazy because he's going to be a player that's going to command, you know, a starting position. He's going to be at an age where he's not going to want to sit on a bench. So it's just going to create more problems. And he's definitely a player who definitely wants to play every single game. So why would you give this manager such a headache? Why not just give him the ability to come in, assess who he wants to assess, and then decide who's the player for him and go forward. If it decides that he wants to play McTominay and Fred as a double pivot, I will just have to accept it as a fan. But committing, you know, the likes of McTominay's and the Freds to long-term contracts and the Bruno Fernandes knowing full well that you don't know who the manager's going to be it's just crazy to me ridiculously crazy and just kind of puts us again into a corner where we won't be able to sell these players going moving forward if you give a Luke Shaw an extension he's essentially got a contract for life at United where else is he going to go he's going to retire at the club especially when you consider how long it's taken us to get rid of players like one matter Phil Jones is still at the club Jesse Lingard who definitely went to leave and made all the noises to leave is still at the club like come on so this idea of giving Bruno Fernandes a contract again I don't think is warranted especially off the back of last season um, maybe you could say he should get one because he's been the only person that's been you know especially for recent transfers who actually done anything but I still think everyone should be playing for their supper I think everyone should be going into this new permanent manager appointment not knowing if they're going to have a career at United everybody I don't care who it is no one in that club 
nobody with the exception of maybe Anthony Langer or something or some of the young players coming up no one in that club deserves to get a contract based on what they did prior because they've all been parts of really disastrous United Reigns you know United Reigns where they've essentially forced the manager out by down in their tools United Reigns where they've come out and said the most entitled nutty stuff about the training programs and having to train at night and all this nonsense they don't want to press like they're the most entitled bunch of players that exist they need a bit of humbling they need to be brought back down to earth and the only way you could do that is by giving the manager the ability to get them out if need be but signing these players to long-term contracts i think is a recipe for disaster personally but most likely than not they're going to do it anyway and we're going to have to just move forward as a club and just kind of pray and hope it works out which it obviously won't because football's no there is no there is no there is no flukes in football you are where you are for a reason and United are just never going to get to that position again until I think you know we get rid of the Glazers and unfortunately there's no appetite within our fan base to really you know spark a change and call for it and you know, it just doesn't exist. I don't, and I just can't figure out why that is. I really can't. But hey, we have to move 